the governor of Virginia is trying to stay in office tonight because, uh, in part because he does not want to be defined as a racist by resigning, according to reports. He says he was not in the photo that landed uh, him in trouble after initially saying that he was in that photo. He's admitted now to donning blackface uh, uh, before, though. He suggests it was not actually blackface because of cleanup difficulties that he only used a little bit of black shoe polish when he was imitating Michael Jackson in a dance competition in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, a lot of questions and problems still per, uh, remain for the governor of his own making. He's trying to dig himself out of a hole, or at least deny the hole, and he's just made it worse. Joining us now is Cornell West, professor uh, of the practice of public philosophy at Harvard University and professor emeritus at Princeton. Dr. West, it's go, uh, always good to have you. Should the governor resign? Well, I think that um, he has a very weak argument in staying, and so I think he probably does have to go, but I think we've got to put this in the larger context, my brother, that the ugly legacy of white supremacy takes a number of different forms. The Klan's one form, blackface is another, decrepit housing's another, poverty rates disproportionate of black, brown, and red's another, unemployment, underemployment's another. When we talk about white supremacy, we can't just fetishize one individual and then trash that individual. It's too easy. It's too self-righteous. It doesn't take too much courage to come down on somebody who's, who's in blackface and wants to dance like Michael Jackson or ends up with this on this page, whether it's him or not, and that's still important fact. Unfortunately, he is a product of this vicious white supremacist culture, and he can change. He does not have to be a racist for life. He could end up being a strong anti-racist. That was 35 years ago. So it's not a question of whether he himself is going to not either be in office or not be in office. This is a larger tradition. And mm. how do we fight white supremacy, no matter what color we are? I'm concerned about the quality of his soul in life after he leaves. This is what First Baptist uh, brothers and sisters in Capeville are concerned about. He doesn't have to remain locked into this racist perception. He could do a whole host of things that mm. can show the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. and Fannie Lou Hamer mean something to him, that the legacy of Ann Braden means something to him. But I'm, I'm, I'm a little disturbed, my brother, about these, these liberal centrist Democrats who can trash his brother so easily when they just supported him a few months ago. Mm. I see brother Bernie Sanders supported his progressive candidate, right? The same person they're trashing, they support it. Well, where's the principle? Where's morality? Where's integrity? Where's an acknowledgement that white supremacy sh is shot through all of us, including black people? That's how so, deep it cuts in this nation. And who's going to fight for it? How are you going to fight for it? That's what we need to talk about as much as just trashing his brother and kicking him when he's down. That, I, I uh, think, you know, he's in trouble and he's got to go, but that's not the conclusion. That's just a starting point of a serious discussion of how we're going to fight against white supremacy, beginning with poor black, poor brown, poor yellow, and working class people of color. Well, I certainly, I hear what you're saying. We've talked about this before, about expanding the definition of yes. white supremacy, that it's easy to just focus on, on, on a photo and be blind to uh, other in right. inequalities. In terms of, you know, I mean, there, this is obviously, as you say, this is one man. There are plenty of people who have done stupid things, inappropriate things, racist things, horrible things in their past, in high school, in college, you know, this in medical school. What, what is the process for overcoming that? What is the process for not having your life be damned by something you did, some racist act that, that you did or that you said? Uh, how do you atone for that? Well, one is the first thing you do, you cast it as a moral and ethical dialogue. It's not a matter of just offending black people because white supremacy is trashing us. It's barbaric, it's monstrous, but it's a moral issue. Whites, brown, a whole host of people ought to be just as morally outraged as black people. The same is true with black people and other people are trashed in this regard. Jews in France, Palestinians on, 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 under occupation. T Tibet, it's a moral, spiritual issue. We, we, we dumb down the whole discussion if it's just a matter of liberal self-righteousness in the name of black people being offended, trashing this white brother. White supremacy must be hated. White supremacy must be trashed. But the question is, how do we attempt to engage in efforts collectively and individually together? None of us escape 
white supremacy, male supremacy, homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, anti-Arab, anti-Palestinian, anti-Muslim. All of these vicious evils are shot through us. And if we can't ascend to the moral and spiritual level, this is the legacy of Martin King. This is the legacy of John Coltrane. This is the legacy of Nina Simone. How do we keep that legacy alive? And thank God that we have some kind of context in which we can go beyond just this ugly name calling and finger pointing because all of us in the end are fallen. All yeah. of us in the end are in some sense sinners. And if you're going to do away with all the racist elements and sensibilities, you're not going to have too many people in Congress. You're not going to have too many people on Wall Street. You're not going to have too many people on television because all of us are shaped to some degree. Now, there's, there's gradation, the Ku Klux Klan, gangster capital G, yes. But there's some other gangster small G that's working in this regard. And the question is, how do we remain in contact with the humanity of each and every one of us so we can accent our best? I believe mm. Brother Ralph has potential to be a great anti-racist activist just like LBJ. He doesn't mm. have to be in office to do that because I don't think he can govern. But I'm concerned about him as a human being as well, not just as a governor. He's a mm. human being. He's made an image of, gay like a, made an image of God like everybody else. Man. Uh, Professor West, thank you so much. And you mentioned Nina Simone. I'm thinking of her singing Sinner Man right now, which sounds appropriate. Oh, uh, yes. You know what I'm talking about, brother. You know what I'm favorites. talking about. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Do Dr. West, always great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, stay strong with me. All right. You too. Breaking news on the investigation. <laughs>